Almost 70 million car units are invented worldwide in a year. Still, we all lust for the cars that we see on big screens. Cars had a significant role in almost every TV show and movie during the 1960s, 1970s, and 1980s. So, viewers see these cars and instantly link it with a specific show or brand. Cars are simply the means of the transportation, but many movies have presented them as a symbol of success and modernity. Nothing is more famous than memorable cars that the main characters drive, especially when the hero gets involved in racing of any kind. These are the most iconic cars of the modern time. James Bond's 1964 Aston Martin DB5 one of the most recognizable vehicles in movie history is the Aston Martin DB5. In 1964, Ian Fleming's novel Goldfinger was made into a feature film. For that film, Deirdre Seven's vehicle was a silver birch DB5 was used. It rose to become one of the most well-known automobiles in the world almost immediately. Many people believe that the Aston Martin DB5 is the most iconic car ever made for James Bond, and modified versions of the car can be seen in later James Bond films like Spectre, 2015, Thunderball, 1965, Goldeneye, 1995, Tomorrow Never Dies, 1997, Casino Royale, 2006, Skyfall, 2012, and No Time to Die, 2021. In August 2019, one of the movie models sold for an incredible 6.4 million. It has proved the role of big screen and the DB5's immense influence. Aston Martin also produced a 25-piece limited edition of brand new, highly equipped 1965 DB5 Goldfinger continuation cars, which sold out for an astounding $3.5 million each. DeLorean DMC-12 Back to Future Triology, with its sleek, retro-futuristic Guerghetto Gigiaro styling and a powerful 130 horsepower 2.9 liter V6 engine, the DeLorean DMC-12 is an eye-catching vehicle made of stainless steel. The DeLorean was chosen for the first movie partly due to its gullwing doors, which gave it an extraterrestrial spaceship appearance when director Robert Zemeckis and Robert Gale conceived of it. The time machine eventually took on a life of its own during the two sequels, changing over time as a result of its time travel adventures. Despite being a commercial failure in the 1980s, the DeLorean gained a cult following thanks to its inclusion in all three Back to the Future movies. The DeLorean DMC-12 was reportedly supposed to really return to the future in a 2020 model, but it appears that the pandemic has thrown off the plans. Although before Back to the Future turned the iconic automobile into a movie celebrity, the DeLorean DMC-12 had only been in production for two years and its Irish manufacturing had already closed. The DMC-12 was a commercial failure and a letdown for fans of sports cars, but Back to the Future made it into a unique collectible. The public's fascination with the DMC-12 was heightened by the controversy surrounding its maverick creator, despite the film trilogy's success guaranteeing the car's place in Hollywood history. Join us as we take you on a journey through the little-known history of the DeLorean DMC-12, which began as a failed auto startup before becoming a movie legend. Toyota Supra MK4 – The Fast and the Furious The popularity of highly customized Toyota Supra and the innumerable action-packed sequences and stunts spread throughout the nine films in the Fast and Furious film franchise have helped the franchise gain recognition over the years. But a major factor in the success of the film series was the legendary 1994 Toyota Supra piloted by Brian O'Connor, a.k.a. Paul Walker, in the first picture. The heavily modified Supra, with its loud graphics, brilliant orange paint job, and enormous spoiler, helped to cement the 1990s car modification movement in the memories of a whole generation long into the 2000s. In addition, the Supra fostered a cultural revolution that made it cult classic and promoted the MK4 Supra generation. It should come as no surprise that Paul Walker's stunt vehicle brought $550,000 at the Barrett-Jackson auction. Ford Falcon XBGT Mad Max Fury Road Fury Road, the fourth Mad Max movie, is a must-see for any gearhead because of the abundance of post-apocalyptic monster automobiles that were specially built for the movie. The crazy cars, in contrast to the majority of modern movies, were real-world inventions rather than computer-generated visuals. And for that reason, 
the Mad Max V8 Interceptor is an absurdly iconic vehicle. Not even the dystopian movie's mechanic could adequately express his admiration for the iconic 1973 Ford Falcon XBGT. With its big dual fuel tanks, massive switch-activated supercharger, massive flares, fat tires, and menacing four-way exhausts, the Savage Falcon is easily recognizable. Mad Max would undoubtedly top any list of the greatest Australian automobile films. The Ford Falcon was an engine-powered vehicle. The filmmakers changed the nose, applied a flaming paint job, and fitted absurdly big tires. Austin Mini Cooper S1275, the Italian job. An English-built vehicle that rose to fame in Hollywood is the 1967 Austin Mini Cooper S. It has appeared in movies like The Fast and Furious and served as the primary car in the Italian job. This car was made to comfortably fit four people while still being compact enough to squeeze into confined spaces. This car only has two doors, which makes it difficult for backseat passengers to enter and exit. For such a small car, this model's top speed of almost 100 miles per hour was really remarkable. The Mini Cooper's appeal has spread to the world of motorsports, where it has excelled in a number of races, including the esteemed Monte Carlo Rally. The Mini Cooper's popularity has only grown as a result of its success, as enthusiasts and collectors value the vehicle for its performance both on and off screen. Due to its ongoing appeal, the Mini Cooper has evolved into a representation of British pride, and many models and special editions have been produced to mark its legendary position. Classic Mini Coopers are still treasured and restored by enthusiasts and collectors alike, honoring the vehicle's legacy and distinctive design. Chevrolet Camaro Transformers The streets of North America were alive with Camaros, who were a bunch of extraterrestrial robotic life forms and members of the Autobots, led by a man who was purportedly a fictional figure named Bumblebee. In all the Transformers films, Chevrolet vehicles get to play the heroes, said Tim Mahoney, chief marketing officer, Global Chevrolet. These movies have helped us get our vehicles in front of a younger audience around the world. The movie went on to make around $710 million worldwide and kickstart a new Hasbro and Paramount franchise. GM also noticed a sharp increase in interest in the Camaro. Sales of Chevrolet and General Motors have surged by thousands as a result of the movies, with the Camaro in particular seeing a spike in demand. Following the publication of each movie in the series, sales of yellow variants of the car have increased particularly strongly. The vehicle's inclusion in attractions, television series, and toys broadens their appeal and draws greater attention to the various General Motors vehicles featured in the Transformers movie. Kit, the Knight Rider car. In 1982, Knight Rider made its television debut on NBC and ran for four seasons. In addition to turning David Hasselhoff into a global celebrity, the program also produced a star out of the Kit, its first vehicle. The series' main character, played by Hasselhoff as Michael Knight, battled criminals while operating Kit, the Knight Rider Pontiac Trans Am. The fact that the Kit had artificial intelligence and could communicate was one of the major plot twists in the program. Fans of the show grew to adore the Kit, which swiftly rose to prominence as one of the most well-known TV vehicles of the 1980s. On April 4, 2007, Johnny Verhook of Kasabian Motors, Dublin, California, was reportedly offered one of the four kit cars used in the production of the television series for $149,995. Additionally, one of the surviving cars belonged to the late real estate developer and automotive enthusiast, Andrew Kissel, according to a December 2007 USA Today piece. According to some reports, Michael Jackson bought an original kit, and Joey Fatone, a former member of Uhan Sink, reportedly says he bought one of these genuine original kits at auction. Mercedes-Benz 450 SL, Beverly Hills, cop. Axel Foley's friend Jenny pays to get him out of jail. At that point, the red 450 SL with its lovely glossy finish is first seen. It appears sparingly in the initial part of the film and just in a couple of the driving sequences. There was no high-speed chase involving this Benz, so no harm was done. 
It's one of the rare vehicles that made it through filming unscathed. This Crimson 450 SL marked the end of an era for Mercedes-Benz, as the 450 SL was eventually the last model year to be produced, before the 380 and 500 models took its place. Features not found on many other automobiles are included with the SL. At up to 25 miles per hour, the electrically retractable roof of the car can be raised or lowered. An optional panoramic glass part can automatically transition from dark to translucent when the top is up. An active suspension option is available that lowers automatically at high speeds and modifies to lessen body roll in corners. Without these movies, do you think the cars have earned much fame and popularity? Leave a comment below letting us know your thoughts.